All right, let's talk about King David and how the prophet who came to his house when he was still a young man, a teenager, and he was looking for that man who is fitted to be the next king. And when he spoke that word and that prophecy over King David, future King David, at that time, Shepherd David. And um, what happened after that? You know, I'm very excited to talk about this story and how what we want to relate to you through this story, because we get a lot of answers from singles that are just very interesting to us. Yeah, there's 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 two 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 extremes. The one extreme is the lazy scape laziness or religious scapegoating, mm -hmm. which is a cover up for inaction or taking action in the wrong place. Yeah, in an effort to replace inaction in another area of life, or expecting taking lots of action over here to somehow compensate for lack of action here, or that it'll somehow transfer over. Mm -hmm. And it, and that's that's the one area. And then the other one is of striving and going after it and, and pushing for it and, you know, going after your goals and or really pushing forward towards a goal that you want. And then getting impatient when it doesn't happen right away and, you know, getting into this needing to control. Mm -hmm. So there's two spectrums here that we have going. There's like yeah. doing the do, doing nothing and then doing a lot and not seeing the results. And both are pursued producing the same results, which is nothing. Yeah. Why is that? So going back to King David's story. So when a little boy by the name of David, heard that he is suited to be the next king. Did he just wait it for God's timing to come that that position will be granted to him and he is, you know, because he's already appointed, right? That's what God said. That was the prophetic word, word of knowledge over David. Well, he didn't do that. He didn't wait. He had responsibilities. Mm -hmm. He had things that he needed to do. He was a shepherd and he actually was practicing to become a warrior. Yeah, that, that slingshot that he used to kill that lion and that bear, both with, with slung rocks and mm -hmm. also one instance with his bare hands. He mm -hmm. rescued a little lamb out of the mouth of a predator. Yeah. And ultimately Goliath. You know, he practiced probably in those moments of boredom, mm -hmm. watching the sheep, and there's nothing to do. And he was probably practicing with that slingshot thousands upon thousands of times until he could hit something bullseye mm -hmm. at a hairbreadth every single time, exactly where he wanted to. Yeah. So it wasn't a miracle that he hit Goliath. He knew that he was going to hit Goliath. And he, by the way, he took five stones along with him. How many brothers did Goliath have? I believe he had five brothers. Four brothers. Four brothers. So there's five of those giants. Mm -hmm. uh, you can read about them mm -hmm. in other places of the Bible. So he was prepared to take them all out if they come to defend their brother, apparently, or something like that. I don't know, yeah. but he wasn't expecting to miss. And so it took lots of endurance and boring practice, maybe. Yeah. But that's what it took. Yeah. That pushing through, staying consistent. Mm -hmm. on doing and exercising and developing and refining that which will make you great yeah it requires sometimes some boring practice of just keep on doing that yeah. thing so it's a skill and character exactly and so we we come into bring that into the realms of relationship mm -hmm. we recognize that you know communication is a skill connecting is a skill yeah if you don't believe me then just go back to when you were a baby did you have any skills then mm -hmm. on how to communicate no it was yeah. wham that was about the only way you could communicate right <laughs> <laughs> how to how to connect no back when you were a baby the world revolved around you from your from our perspective you know yeah. so we had to learn how to give not just receive you know that's a skill mm -hmm. and so even how to pray how to have a relationship with god is all developed through you're applying knowledge and practicing and becoming fluent at it. Yes. And skill produces confidence. 
And sometimes we think we're more confident than we actually are when we mm -hmm. get impatient. And God's like, no, you're not ready. Keep practicing. Yeah. So I kind of want to go back to that timeline again. You know, when David is a shepherd, he's practicing his skill of, you know, throwing stones and getting very good at it, perfecting it. <clears throat> he was also practicing a skill of worship. So he was practicing skill to become a warrior and a worshiper. And his character was developing in that. And also he was a steward, right? He was stewarding and sheep. sheep. Learning how to shepherd people. Yeah. So it's interesting. Like we hear a lot of times that people are where they are and they're like, well, you know, it's just a whole new place for me. God has something better for me. Well, what are you doing with the with that time and that space and that job and that um, occupation, whatever, wherever you are? And <clears throat> you still need to develop. God is not going to appoint you to be something better if you're not practicing and becoming before that, few, right? Few things grind me as much as when I hear a believer, a Christian, say that they're waiting on God or that God told them to do something or to go, you know, to do this or that. Mm -hmm. And then when I ask them the question, have you defined what you want? Yeah. And the walls go up. No, nope, I just want what God wants. And I'm like, oh, we got to crash and burn up here <laughs> because it, until you define what you want, mm -hmm. you'll not truly discover and tap into what God put inside of you to, yes. to, to find out and discover and then present back to him say, God, I would love to do this. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. And give me wisdom on making a wise decision here and guide me forward yes. into this. Because you put this in me. You put mm -hmm. that desire, the mm -hmm. desire of my heart into me. You promise that you'll give me the desires of my heart if I if I seek you with all my heart and yeah. trust you fully and go after it. And what happens is so many times people think they hear from the Lord and then they go a certain direction without having defined those things within. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden a situation arises where apparently God changed his mind. Yeah. <laughs> the thing didn't work out. Mm -hmm. It was undeveloped uh, character. character, undeveloped skills, undeveloped yeah. confidence, yes. and not having defined things appropriately. And uh, then things don't work out. And that can really impact people's willingness to step out mm -hmm. and trust God because mm -hmm. like, well, you know, I want to make sure I don't want to, that, that hurt, that, that burnt. And I don't want to get burnt again. Yeah. So now we have the, it produces this whole, I'm just going to wait on God. I'm not going to move until God tells me to move. Mm -hmm. And God's like, you know. <laughs> ask, knock, and seek. Seek, mm -hmm. ask, knock. Adorable. All action things, by the way. All action. You got to be knocking. Guess what? You have to actually be bang, 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 bang. Ask. Hey, I got a question here. See, oh, uh, where is that thing? Yeah. Guess what? There's action involved. So, so if you're not taking action while you're waiting on God, <clears throat> Forget it. <laughs> you know, I, I want to bring this up too, is that, you know, we are all about connection and relationships, right? And that's how it is with God. It's a relationship. You need to have a harmony and balance with God and knowing his heart for you and his desires. He put them in you, as Jesse already said. And if you don't want to pull them out, is that his responsibility to pull it out of you? He will, but you still need to do something. So that is why it's so important in the relationship with God, in the relationship with yourself and with others, you need to have communication. You need to have confidence. You need to have commitment, which is also commitment requires action, okay? And those and consistently, yes, exactly. Daily commitment. Okay. Follow through. And so in this process, you're creating your character, as we talked about already, and skill. And then God says, Ah, oh, you're ready. Ready to receive. You're ready, ready to, to receive. Ready to move forward. Okay. Now well it's time. done for exercising that muscle and yes. developing your confidence and skill in this area by taking care of sheep. Yes. Practicing with a slingshot and practicing playing music mm -hmm. on that heart. Mm -hmm. Now you're ready to be a king. Yeah. Guess what? The word came long before he was ready, right? 
so that, that that also kind yeah. of brings it into the spectrum of the uh, impatience like why yes. isn't this happening for me i am taking action and still nothing's happening for me right just remember king david mm -hmm. and practicing reminds me of jesus as well Same Yeshua, our Messiah, yeah yeah was born into the world to fulfill something to came as a savior it took him 30 years to practice the skill of being that holy man. Mm -hmm. He practiced and he knew every single thing from Torah so well that he, it was coming out of his mouth. Yes, he was God, but he lived here as a man. He had to express himself. Man. Yeshua, Jesus had to express 100% humanity while on earth yes. so that no man can say hey no fair of course you could do that because you're god mm -hmm. no he led a life that was per a perfect example of what he wanted all humanity to be walking out as well in yeah. their humanity yeah so and anyhow it, um yeah so a lot of stories you guys you yeah. can go read i it. have another one this i i had this conversation with this gentleman that i inter i i like to interview singles and i interviewed this one older gentleman and I was impressed. He was on four different dating sites. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't just a flower on the wall. He was actively reaching out, communicating, connecting with women, getting to know them, but not dating any of them necessarily. He was mm -hmm. just like, just getting to know them. And he said he went through 100 conversations and hello, how I get to know you, asking some questions, having phone calls and video chats with some of them mm -hmm. just to you know, like feel them out and see what he went through a hundred women before he finally landed on the one that he was like, that one. That's impressive. There she is. That's and I was impressive. Like, now that is perseverance. Most people give up after a five, 10, maybe 20, and I'm like, oh, this isn't working. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you might be you might be five feet from gold. You know, to you never... find that one, you gotta continue practicing throwing that stone until you're so good. When you see her, you're like, "That's it, I got it." And you know, him doing that, he was also practicing the communication skill mm -hmm. and discernment skill very much because you know, lot, lots of opportunity to compare and to discover what he likes what he doesn't like and knowing what he wants yes. right yes guess what how do you know if that's the right person if you don't know what you want if you've never gone out on a date and you never communicated with somebody with an eye towards perhaps you know pursuing them or being pursued by yeah if you're a woman and then it that's why it's hard to choose and decide is because yeah. that muscle of of having experienced different options and possibilities by having had conversations. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about hooking up and having sex with all sorts of people. That's not what I'm talking about here. Yeah, I'm talking about just a genuine human to human conversation. Get to know mm -hmm. somebody on a surface level, you know, enough to find out what their dreams and goals are in life. Yeah. And to see if their mission is remotely in alignment with yours, just that much. And if you have a hundred conversations of just of just discovering what the other person's mission is, having enough conversation with them to go there, mm -hmm. then you, once you do that a hundred times, trust me, you'll you'll have picked out which categories of ladies you really connect or which categories of men you really mm -hmm. connect with and the other ones not so much. Yeah. Now you've defined some things and you'll have a better template with which to to see ah that that's my type that's that's the type that's it and then yeah. you just go after the details of what we teach in our single to married community mm -hmm. uh, of how to define the 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 details and the ins and outs of you know really nailing it on if this is the one you want to get married to or not or yeah. whether you just make a friend well there we go hopefully this was helpful and uh there's so many things that we can cover on this topic but you also need to take it to the private time, spend time with yourself, define those things, and then ask God to guide you in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We love you. We bless you. And we're bringing you hope and tools for connection and relationships. Closing thought. If God is silent, ask him for wisdom as you make a decision and then move forward and trust him to guide you. Yes. All right. See you next time. Be blessed.